Hello, I'm Ty Willison with Habitat for Humanity. Um, today we are going to be replacing a window on this house and we have a couple of different stages that we're at right now. Um, normally Habitat, you think of building new houses, but we also, starting in about 2010, um, remodel houses too. And especially in the areas where we're building new houses, the, the, the neighborhoods where we're building new houses. Um, as a matter of fact, we built uh, about 59 houses in a development just like three houses, or uh, three streets over that way. And, um, but today, we're replacing a window. This house has all single pane windows. They all have these uh, uh, foggy glass. Um, they all don't really work anymore. They don't really open and close anymore. Um, a lot of them are missing their screens. Um, there are a lot of them don't have, they don't seal all the way around. And so even, with their, even when they're closed, they kind of let air in and out. Um, so we're putting these vinyl windows. They're very energy efficient, double pane glass, uh, low E, and insulated. Um, so we're putting those in. They work, they work nice and smoothly and uh, work really well. Well, as you can see, it has what's called a flange, this little edge right here. And when they installed it back in 1960, when they built this house, they um, put in this wood bucking, and I'll show you what that is in a little bit. And then they caulk right to this edge right here, all the way around. So when we took it out, we had to take out some screws, there was just four of them, and we had to push it out from the inside, and when we did that, we were breaking that caulk edge. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing on this one over here. Now, of course, in order to get to it, that flange, we have to first remove the stucco, all four sides. Uh, not all houses have that, but this one does, and that's okay, we just have to remove it and then stucco um, it back later. Okay, so now we're at the step where we're going to start removing the stucco and we're going to use what's called an angle grinder and it has a diamond blade on it today. We're gonna, that's, that's what you use to cut concrete and mortar and stuff. And make sure you stay safe. You want to make sure you have a guard on there, that you wear a dust mask because there's lots of silica in the concrete dust. Wear safety glasses and I have ear protection. Now that I've got a score mark and it's going to break nice and nice and clean on that line, I'm going to start hitting at it with my hammer. And we found yesterday that it, uh, at this house anyway, it comes off pretty easily. But if it doesn't, we do have our hammer drill with a, a, a chipping bit to break at it. Okay, so when we got all the, caulk, the uh, stucco off, I found that there's a whole bunch of loose caulk on here, which actually works out perfect because that's got to come out too. Um, See, just, just, just got to pull all that out too. And, because that's what, ha that's what that's how they glued in the window before. They, they put it in with caulking and screws. And so that's got to come out in order for us to get this window out. They're real short because they are going into uh, wood bucking that's on the cinder block but the wood bucking is only three quarters of an inch thick, so they didn't use really long screws. This falls out. And we won't reuse these because we have new screws to put in. And besides, these are, have a rusty head. We're gonna use exterior screws that don't rust. Okay, so that's the screws on the out, on the in, wait, no, we're on the outside. On the outside, now we're gonna go find the ones on the inside and take down the blinds. Um, well, we took down the blinds and um, we took out the brackets too because they were in the way of putting in the new one. And as a matter of fact, I missed one. I gotta do this little bracket right here. And now, a lot of times um, when you're taking out windows uh, that are, say, 15, 20 years old, they are in there pretty good and you have to really push on them pretty hard and you have to cut the caulking all the way around with your knife. This one's been in here since the 60s and so it's not actually in there very good. And so 
lower you just able to push on it and it comes, starts to come right out. As, my, as long as I've got all the screws, which I think I have, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, it looks like I did get all the screws. So it just, you always gotta have somebody helping you because you gotta push it out to that person. Um, now, the next step is we're gonna clean this all up before we dry fit the, the new one. Um, but ideally what happens is it sits inside of the drywall here and here and here and on top of the, the windowsill right here. So that way when we put the new one in, if everything works out correctly, all we have to do is caulk all the way around the sides. Of course, that's on the inside. On the outside, we'll also caulk it to the wood bucking. That's just as a wood bucking I was telling you about before. Um, so we're gonna put our window against it too, and we're gonna caulk it right to that. Now down here at the bottom, that's a little different though because you wouldn't wanna have wood, wood, wood rot pretty quickly because you know gravity, water falls down. So they put in a concrete sill, and the concrete sill has this little concrete edge on it. Um, so we're going to caulk right to that too. Um, okay, we're going to get to work with the uh, cleaning it up. I found that when we were cleaning it up there was a bunch of loose caulk on the inside and it's better to just go ahead and get rid of that now and we'll just have to caulk it correctly later. Okay, I also cleaned the window, especially the inside of it because I don't want to put a dirty window inside the house. Other than that, I think we're ready to dry fit it. Um, so what we're checking for after, as soon as he gets it up there, is we're going to center it in the opening. Center it on the inside, though, uh, because that's what everybody's going to see. Okay, so we got the window in, and I already put two screws in. That way the guys outside can let go. But I just wanted to show you guys in here that what we're looking for is a gap on all sides. Now, Obviously, I don't know if you, the camera can see it or not, but it's a different size gap in different places. But that's just that's just because it's an old house, so uh, it's pretty uniform over here on the right hand side. But it goes from an eighth of an inch at the bottom here to about a half an inch at the top here, and it looks like it's about three eighths of an inch all the way across the top. There's not much I can do about that because everything is not square level and plumb. But that's just because it's an old house. But once we get all it caulked and everything, it's going to look real good. Um, but at least already, it's already sealed. Well, where we're putting in our screws for our new window, it doesn't hit the wood bucking because the new window is wider than the old window. So I'm not able to use wood screws. I have to use Tapcons. Tapcons is a, a blue, typically blue, screw that has special threads looks like this, and that can bite into the concrete. But you do have to pre-drill. And so I take my hammer drill and I use my concrete bit that's the size for correctly for this size Tapcon, and then I'll pre-drill it and then screw in my screw with my regular drill, obviously. We have put in these replacement windows a few days ago, and I just wanted to talk to you about the things that we've done since we've put them in. Um, that you know to finish it off so once you've got the window in you're really only about halfway done because there's so much work to do to finish it off on the inside and on the outside uh, especially if you have stucco to do on the outside like these do um, but let's talk about the inside right now um, I don't know if you guys remember but we never took out the marble windowsill the new window went on top of it and on top of the existing drywall here here and here uh, but because the opening was not square, level, plumb, on the same plane, really nothing was right about it, uh, we had to put it in in such a way that we made the window look like it was square, level, plumb. Um, so we rested it on the marble, which conveniently was level, and then we had all of these funky gaps that we had to fill in on the inside. So. A couple different methods to do that. Uh, some guys use uh, these uh, tubes of foam that you can get at Lowe's and Home Depot for filling in large gaps. And you can stuff it in and then caulk it, but that typically means you have to caulk it twice because the first time you caulk it, it's going to look great while it's still wet, but then it, as it dries, it shrinks. And then you have to caulk it again, and then the second time it looks good. Um, but that's not what we did here. 
we actually we thought about doing that, but what ended up working even better was we um, I had my drywall guy come, and he used what's called five minute mud, which is a type of drywall mud that you have to mix yourself. It's not a ready mix. It comes in a bag and actually says big big number five minutes, and that five minute means that you have five minutes to work with it once it's mixed. Um, so it gets really hard, which is great for this application because you only need to mix, say, a uh, uh, like the size of three softballs um, worth of mud, and that will typically do you know maybe say two sides of a window, um, depending on how big the gap is. But in this in this in this house, it was about you know two sides of a window, um, and then the, t typically we had a really big gap at the top. Um, and that's because with it comes to side to side, we could center it and kind of make this gap the same as best we can on both sides. And the top though, with the bottom just resting on the marble windowsill, the top is whatever it is. And so some of them it worked out great, and the other ones it didn't. Um, and so this one we had to fill in a whole bunch. And I don't know if you can kind of zoom in on this top part, but you can kind of see that the old drywall ended about a quarter inch higher than where it is now. And you can kind of see that along here, the different discolorations, because it hasn't been painted yet. On the sides, he just didn't really need to do this. But on the top, what he did was he wanted to make sure that his outside corner had a nice straight line. Well, that's really hard to do unless you have something to mud it to. So what he did was he put this piece of wood at the height that he wanted to make his mud. Obviously, this was this piece of wood was for a shorter window. This this is this window is the biggest window in the house. So for this window, he used a longer piece of wood. Anyway, he put it at the height that he wanted it. About, but he made he made the the bottom of the wood flush with the top of the window where he wanted to stop his mud. And so he's got this like big gap area to fill in with this five minute mud. So after he attaches the wood, he just stuffs it in with his. Uh, drywall knife, he probably had like three or four different sizes, take it out of his thing and stuff it up in there and smooth it across the wood, right? Keep and Just keep doing that all the way across. And then he would come up through and swipe it and make it all nice and smooth. Again, resting it right against the wood. And then he'd let that dry and, you know, five minutes later, he'd be able to start doing it again and, and kind of fill in any gaps or air bubbles or, or lines or anything like that. And after the mud dried, he could take the piece of wood off and then he can sand it with sandpaper and make it all nice and smooth, round over the hard edge of the, of the outside corner. And I, once this is painted, it'll look like this window was always like that. That's the idea. You know what I mean? Make it look like it's always been here. Uh, at this house, all we have left to do now is to put in the blinds and um, I think she has some curtains in to go in too. Uh, to replace the old ones that were here. Um, the old ones are like 40 years old, so they, I don't know if they even worked anymore. Um, and now she has a very energy efficient window and wall. It's really great. Uh, we're going to go outside now and look. I'm going to show you what we did on the outside of the window. Well, now we're on the outside of the house um, looking at these replacement windows that we put in. We put the stucco on, and well, my stucco guy did a great job. He's got a uniform texture. You don't see any trowel marks. He does that, I think, by uh, putting the mud in with his trowel, getting it all kind of relatively the same height, and then he goes back after it's thumbprint hard. Where thumbprint hard is where you can touch it and you can see your thumbprint, but it's not so soft that it'll just easily come back back out. Um, he waits till it gets a little bit hard, and then he washes it with his sponge, kind of in a circular motion, and gets all this uniform texture to it. Um, the other thing he had to do was, uh, especially on the windowsill, was it was a real smooth surface and the old stucco came off real easily, but that's why. It's because it was, they were trying to stick it to a real smooth surface, and so my stucco guy had to go through with, probably with an angle grinder and a diamond blade, a diamond blade on an angle grinder, and rough it up, just scratch it all up, rough it up, get it all scored up and then put on his stucco, and that way it has something to adhere to, something with a mechanical fastening type texture. The other thing he did really great was he kept it a uniform reveal all the way around, so the same amount of window is showing all the way around. Um, 
which that made it nice for when we were putting in the window, we knew that he was going to be covering up part of the window to the part that we caulked. And so we didn't have to be real concerned about the caulk looking really good or not because we knew it was getting covered with stucco. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you for watching.